Thank you, Mr. Bershaw. Mr. Javen. Chairman Langford, distinguished members of the subcommittee, thank you very much for inviting me to testify this morning. My name is William Yateman. I work at the Competitive Enterprise Institute. We are a free market think tank here in Washington, D.C. Oh, wonderful, getting a visual aid. I'm here this morning to speak to you about how EPA is using the sue and settle, so-called sue and settle consent decrees to usurp the state's rightful authority on regional haze. Um, first, uh, a, a short primer on the regional haze regulation. It's a Clean Air Act regulation, um, and its purpose is to improve the view at national parks and wilderness areas. Um, this point bears repeating. It's an aesthetic regulation, not a public health regulation. Due to this fact, the Congress intended for the states to be the lead decision makers on regional haze policy, on visibility improvement policy. Despite state primacy, the Environmental Protection Agency has already imposed three federal implementation plans for regional haze on Oklahoma, New Mexico, and North Dakota over the staunch objection of state officials. EPA's plans would cost almost $400 million per year more than the state's plans, which were crafted with all due process over the course of years. Sue and Settle Sue and, uh, sorry, Sue and Settle featured prominently um, in EPA's actions in these federal implementation plans. And I'll briefly sketch out how it worked for each of these states. In a Northern California court, EPA agreed to deadlines on regional haze as part of a settlement agreement with Wild Earth Guardians. The states were not, um, were not notified and were not part of this agreement, or notified after the fact, but were not part of this agreement. On the eve of the consent decree deadline, EPA objected to the process used by states for their regional haze determinations. They didn't take on their determinations directly due to state primacy accorded by the Clean Air Act on regional haze policy. Instead, they objected to the process. Usually, it was the state's cost-effectiveness analysis. That's what they went after. Um, this didn't reject the state's plan outright. Rather, it held it in abeyance, sort of a holding pattern. Then, EPA claimed that Pursuant to the con consent decree, it had no choice but to run roughshod over the state and impose its own preferred plan, federal imp implementation plan. Um, so that's how it's worked in each of these three states, this three-part strategy. Um, already, and as I mentioned, Oklahoma, New Mexico, and North Dakota, $400 million per year of costs over what the states had determined was necessary to comply with the regional Hayes rule. EPA's proposed FIPS for Wyoming and Nebraska. These would cost $120 million per year more than the state's planned. Utah and Arkansas are likely next. And for what? What is the ultimate benefit of these federal implementation plans? Thanks to uh, uh, Colorado State University professors have actually created software that allows us to visualize visibility impairment. It's known as WinHaze. It's available on the internet for free. I downloaded that software. I input the, the EPA's own data, its own baseline data, and its own visibility improvement data. What I found was rather striking. I've got two images to convey what I did find. On the left here, this is Oklahoma, Wichita Mountains National Park. This is the most affected class one area um, of the EPA's federal imp implementation plan for Oklahoma. This is the result of the, this is the benefits, the putative benefits of the regulation right here. On the left, we've got the state's controls. On the right, we've got EPA's controls. Notably, this is the largest disparity between state and EPA controls. This is the biggest improvement engendered by any of EPA's actions on regional haze to date. This improvement, quote unquote, was worth $282 million per year in control costs and compliance costs. So this is a side-by-side -side photo. Up on the monitor, oh jeepers, we, we had it there right before, but perhaps it's not there anymore. We'll get it back up on the monitor. In addition to side-by-side -side images, WinHaze, the aforementioned software, allows us to do split images. So it's, in essence, a melding of the two. On the left half, those are the state controls. On the right half, right 50 percent, those are EPA's controls. The split image is meant to accentuate any difference between the two visibility results. As you can tell, or at least as certainly as to my eyes, there is no difference. Even the split image, which is supposed to accentuate the difference, is invisible. There, I, I cannot tell a difference. Last night at, 
at the Competitive Enterprise Institute, I lined up my colleagues and had them each look at this placard. None of, this, none of them could distinguish a difference. So in essence, it appears to be all pain and no gain with respect to this regional haze regulation. And uh, that concludes my testimony. I look forward to taking your questions. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you to all of you. Uh, now recognize myself.